السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى عليه وصحبه ومن ولا اللهم زدنا علما ولا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم افتح مسامع قلوبنا لذكرك اللهم اجعلنا من الذاكرين ومن الشكارين آمين وصلي وسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد في الأولين وصلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد في النبيين وصلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد في المرسلين وصلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين آمين My dear brothers and sisters, we started uh, to study together Surah Ar-Rahman last time, which is about three weeks ago, and uh, I believe we covered the first six ayahs. So in summary, as you remember, Surah Ar-Rahman is, can be summarized as a manifestation of the Rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the quality of Rahmah and it is not about the general quality of Rahmah but it is the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself and it is summarized in the first ayah which is Ar-Rahman the source of all Rahmah the ultimate of all Rahmah which is the merciful love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rest of the surah, you could say, is details or an explanation of or a description of Ar-Rahman. So we talked about that this is unique in that Allah's name is the entire first ayah. And that this surah reminds us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us through this surah, of some of his blessings, some of his rahmah, some of his na'mah, his blessings, and uh, his favors. And of course, it's not comprehensive in the sense that it mentions every favor because you could take all the inks in the ocean and all the trees could become pens and you could not still compile the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings our focus by reminding us about some major things starting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allama al-Qur'an that he taught you the Qur'an which is the ultimate of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings because it is only through the Qur'an that we can know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is only through the Qur'an that we can succeed in our lives in the dunya and after Hereafter, and it's only through the Quran that we can approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey Him and worship Him as He wants. So we must remember that the, one of the greatest favor is that Allah has given us hidayah, He has given us guidance, He has taught us the way to get back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to get back to our home in Jannah from where we came. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts that as the first ayah, Allam al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan. And then he says that he created us, Allamahu al-bayan, and he gave us, taught us communication. Bayan, to understand, to explain, to make things clear, to communicate like no other of his creature, creation can, that they the language skills and the skills of communications have been perfected in this one creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can understand and communicate in thousands of languages uh, the most uh, complex of thoughts. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of the universe by talking about the sun and the moon and how he created them for us and here it's we must remember that it's not like these things were created and then we just took advantage of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of this 
for us. Before creating us, he created all of this. And it was custom created for us. It isn't like Allah <laughs> created it for the, the universe and then he just put man in there. Okay, you can also enjoy what I have created. They were specifically created for us. And we talked about what the sun <clears throat> does. What, why is the sun such a blessing? And if we just think at a superficial level, we will say, well, it gives us light. It gives us heat. You know, it makes the trees green. But it's if you really go into the science of the sun, there is hundreds and thousands of things that come out as a result of creation of the sun that we take advantage of. You know, some that we know, like vitamin D that we know now that they didn't know then, and so on and so forth. That if the sun wasn't there, if the light of the sun is taken away, there will be no light and there will be no life. Okay. Similarly, the moon which is just a little satellite that's rotating around the earth. And we know it to, to say, well, we have, it's a nice, beautiful night. And we, we, when we are in love, we compare our sweethearts to the full moon and all of that. But it's much more than that. It has to do with the tides and what happens in the oceans. It has to do with the keeping of the months that we didn't know, that we can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan and could perform Hajj at the right time and so on and so forth. And not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a tilt between the orbits of the of the sun and of the earth and the and the the moon of 5.1 degree. And that makes all the difference. If it wasn't, all of the phenomenon that you see would not take place. So it's such a precise system. And then you have this is just two. Or three items, the earth, the moon, and the sun that I mentioned, mm -hmm. just in this solar system and then the galaxies. And you have billions of galaxies that are created that you look at the North Star and you look at the Big Dipper and the Small Dipper and you can navigate at night through the oceans without any navigation system that people have done forever. Okay, All of that are there and yet they move in at such tremendous speeds, but they're not colliding with each other. All of this is going on for people to understand that there is this super system running as a favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we, and this is just briefly recapping this because if we can, we can spend a whole session just on one ayah if we go into the details of it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, one najmu wa shajru yasjudan, that he talked about the, the stars. And, and the trees that they prostrate themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we said one interpretation of Najm is the, the plants that don't have the, the thick trunk. Okay. Uh, in other words, whatever is in the heavens, which is the stars and so on, and whatever is on the earth, they prostrate, they do sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, every creature is an umam. It's an, um, it's, an um, it's an ummah of itself, like the ummah of the ants, the ummah of the birds, the ummah of the fish. And they are all in tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They know their Lord and they praise their Lord continuously. The trees, the rocks. And we saw that miracle that the Prophet sallallahu had some stones, some pebbles, rocks in his hand. And the Sahaba heard what? The tasbih from the rocks. So what was the miracle? The miracle is not that the stones were doing tasbih. They do that anyway. The miracle was that the Sahaba were able to, Allah made them able to hear that. Okay. So everything is in tasbih, submission, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is not just saying tas tasbih, he is saying, yes, judun. Yes, judun. Sajda. What does sajda mean to all of you or any of you? What does sajda mean to? I know all this. Submission. Submission. Full submission. Full submission. Okay. Means, and as we are taught, when we are in sajda, we are closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now take look, look at it this way. When I am in sajda, I am claiming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I submit to your will completely. And now I'm admitting this when I am closest to you, which is in sajda. Right? 
Now, if I claim that, and then I go and disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I know this is what Allah ordered and I don't do it. What does that make me? That even in my sajda, I am lying to Rabbul Alameen. I am closest to you and I'm still lying to you that I submit when I have not submitted. That I know you told me don't do this and I'm still doing it. You told me to do this and I'm still not doing it. And yet I claim that I submit to you. This is something to reflect on. Something to reflect on. This is very serious. In other words, five times, say, if we just do the faraid, 17 rakah, 34 sajdas, 34 times a day, I lie to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, I'm claiming, and you to one who already knows what's inside me and what I'm doing. Allahu Akbar. So this should open our eyes, our minds, and our hearts. Ya Allah, I do tawbah to you starting right now. And I will lead my life in obedience, in full submission. I cannot say that I'm going to do this when I retire, that I'm going to be good when I do this. I'm going to be good once I've done hajj. I'm going to obey you after such and such. Submission means... We heard, we cannot claim ignorance. Ya Allah, I did not know that this is wrong. I did not know that salah was not fard. I didn't know that such and such thing was not commanded by you. Yet I claimed I did, but I did not. So this is something that we all need to reflect on. Yes. Well, my reflection is we are human beings. Submit. We want to do, but sometimes we make mistakes. It's not our intent. <coughs> so when we do a sin of omission or commission, and it is not our intent, we do it. That's why we do mafara all the time. Allah, I didn't know that. So there's a degree of so that is that about. is something different. We're talking about someone who knowingly and persistently does not do something that they're supposed to do or do something that they are not supposed to do. If you have a lapse here and there, we are all bani adam. That's a different thing. But if you are persisting on doing something, okay, it's not like you had a slip one time, or you're persis persistent on not doing something. Okay. You were very busy, you looked, especially in the winter time, asr time had gone. Okay, that's a different situation. But I say, well, this five times salah is impractical, especially in the West, and that was 1400 years ago. I, Allah is in my heart. When I come home at night, I can communicate with them. I'll do all my salahs at that time. And I do that as a habit. Okay, that's different. So just to point that out. So inshallah, we will start from there. That's where we had finished last time. Any other co question or comments before we start? A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim wa s-samaa rafa'aha wa wada'a al-meezan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the heavens, the sama, we can use the word uh, skies if you will, it's frequently translated as heavens, but sometimes people confuse heaven with Jannah, paradise. There's a difference, okay? So we have seven Samawat and we have Jannah beyond that. So if you call them skies, you can call them heavens, seven heavens, and then there is paradise. Paradise is different than this, okay? What you see in the universe of stars and planets and galaxies, this is in the Sama Ul Ard, which is the first heaven or first skies. And there are seven of them, each one, unbelievably bigger. What is the comparison? The Prophet ﷺ told us after he had come back from his miraculous journey, he said, everything that you see, this is Samaud Dunya. Okay, this is level one, you know, first grade. And he said, this first heaven compared to the second heaven is, he gave an example, anybody remember? He said, it's a halaqa, it's a ring 
the size of a ring thrown into an open desert. That is the comparison of the first heaven to the second. And then he said the comparison of the second to the third is like a ring in the desert. So just imagine, multiply all of them. Then he said the seventh heaven compared to the arsh, or compared to the kursi, is like a ring in the desert. So this tells you the creation and how vast it is and what little we know. What we see, scientists tell us, 14.2 billion light years across. So 14.2 billion multiplied by the speed of light by, you know, that will give you of what is the known ex universe and that's expanding still. It hasn't come to a halt and then it'll start to contract at some point. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, wa raf He raised, wa sama'a rafa'a, rafa'a, He elevated it so you don't see, you know, like you have a, a tent like a shamiana, you see something caving in here. Elsewhere in Surah, Surah Mulk that most of you read at night, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look in the heavens and see if you can find a fault in it, find a defect in it. And he said, look again, karratan, again. Qalib basaru, your eyes will return with fatigue and you will not find any flaws in it. And this is just what we see. Now they're talking about gates in there. They're talking about black holes and they're talking about so many things that we have no clue of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. He's talked about abwabus samawat, gates, okay, which we don't know about. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, telling us, look around what was created for you. Because he tells us elsewhere in the Quran that I created all of this to serve you. And I created you to serve me. To serve me. And you can't really serve me because I don't need to be served but to worship me and recognize me and do what I ask you to do. If I tell you to do this, you do this. That's all it is. Well, what are al mizan? Mizan, everybody knows? The balance. Yes. So Allah says he set the balance. Now, what does that balance mean to you? Something to reflect about. What, what is the balance you're thinking of? Scale of, scale of justice. Scale of justice. With justice. Divine justice. Divine justice. Absolutely. That everything that Allah created is with justice. And Allah deals with everybody with justice because He is Al Adl. But that's for Himself. Is there any other justice to be done? By us. That we, as His Khalifa, as his representative on earth, every Juma, the brothers go for Juma, and the khutbah ends with, Inna Allah ya'murukum bil adl wal ihsan. Allah, indeed, Allah orders you justice every Friday. We hear this, right? And then you go in the parking lot and you see how unjustly people have parked their cars, right? Before, before that, just go to the shoe rack. If you're lucky, you will not trip over somebody's shoes and fall over. Where is the justice? You know what justice means? Justice adl versus the opposite of justice is injustice, which is called zulm. Justice means to give everything its due. Put every, use everything the way it is meant to be. Put everything where it should be, including your shoes. Now suppose all of us had come here, I'm being a little silly, and everyone said, okay, take your shoes off and everybody put their shoes on top of their heads. Would that be justice? That's injustice. This is meant to be on the head. Shoes are meant to be on the feet. Okay. So Allah commands us justice. He is just. And nobody's going to question him, are you just? But Allah commands us to be just. So this balance is that of justice. Now what is justice in our daily lives? Suppose I have a young son and I prove to him that I am in charge, I am the father, I will do what I want and I want you to do whatever I want, whether it's just or unjust. Do you think that's justice? Because he is smaller and I am bigger. Well, if that's my justice, just remember whenever injustice is done, it comes back. So then you'll hear when you're old and he's strong, he will treat you the same way. Everything that we do, 
that deviates from justice will have an impact, has consequences. Everything has to be used the way. I'll give you an example from the Tabi'in, which is the second generation after the Prophet It's a well-known Tabi'in story that he, this Tabi'i, had uh, uh, radiallahu anh, had memorized the Quran, and he himself says that one day for a few minutes. I did not guard my eyes. Ghaddal Basar, what I should have done. I was looking at someone in a certain way that I should not. And that night I told myself, he said, you will pay for this at some point. And he said, Wallahi, 40 years later, I forgot the Quran. Then I remembered, you know why you forgot the Quran? because of that one injustice that I had done. Now, different people at different levels, okay? But whatever we do, we will see the results of it, either immediately or later. And we may not even link the two together. 